Fine, as I was discussing, I was discussing about identifying elements. And ID is only, it's not just the only way, there are other ways like class name and X paths and all, these are quite famous. Fine, let's talk about X paths, what they are. Sorry, CSS, CSS selectors, class, X paths and all, these are quite common. Let's talk about X paths. Fine. Um, and let's also talk about say CSS selectors. Okay. Uh, well, CSS selectors I have observed. I'll tell you later on what it is, what an X path is. But it works a little faster than X path, especially in Internet Explorer. If you look at the performance, that's something which I have observed over a period of time that if you identify an element using CSS selector, and if you identify the same element using XPath and you use the browser as Internet Explorer i8 or i9, then CSS selector it works pretty fast on major on majority of the applications. Fine. Um, look, it's an open source tool. There is no guarantee in the end, and that's what the documentation also tells you, but offers no guarantees. Right? But yes. It is quite reliable. Suppose if I want to use CSS selector on gmail.java, right? And I used to ident I want to identify my username and button with CSS selector. Then I write here driver dot find element by the CSS selector. Okay. Now in CSS selector, how do you select the element? You can directly write like this. Put a bracket. Okay. Write ID of the element is what is what is the ID? Email, right? You can directly write this. And write if you want, you can write the tag name. If you don't want, just hold on, I'll tell you. Just a minute. Web element. Username is this. And then in the end you can type username dot send keys hello. So in CSS selector you can directly in square brackets you can type the ID fine. And if you run this it goes on Chrome and it types in hello inside the field. Right. If I write over here input, that means there is an input tag on the page whose ID is email. Right. I'm going to talk about CSS selectors in detail. How to use multiple parameters, how to extract multiple components using some internal functions. I'll do that. I'll do everything. Just be with me. Fine. Similarly, if I talk about XPath using XPath. I want to identify an element using XPath. Now, XPath it is of various types. There is not just one type of XPath. There are various type of XPaths. Um, if you, just a minute. I'll open a notepad. And I'll talk about XPaths in little detail right now. Okay. Now, there are two types of XPaths. One type is known as absolute XPath or complete XPath. And another type is known as partial XPath. Absolute XPath is just like the address of the element on the web page, starting from the base of the element. For example, I'll make a partial XPath manually right now, and later on I'll tell you how to use Firebug to make it. Okay, first of all, let me tell you manually. If you go to Gmail again, and I look at the page source. Fine, in page source, I look at the username field. Right. Username field has got the input tag and it is lying over here. 
everything is starting from the base of the document that is the HTML tag. So absolute XPath starts with the HTML tag and it works on the tag names. HTML you write slash. Then inside HTML tag there are head and body two tags. You want to go inside the body tag because the element which you are interested is inside the body tag. Fine. So I'll write over here slash body. Now inside the body tag you have this division div tag. Right. Inside this div tag the element is present. So out here you'll write div. <clears throat> I'm sorry. And then inside this div tag there are many other tags. Okay. There are many other tags. I am interested inside the second division tag. Because inside the second division tag my element is present that is the username field. Right. So I will write over here slash div2. Okay. Div2 that means go inside the second division tab. If I write div1 or if I write div then it will go in the first one. But if I am specifically writing 2, it will go in the second one. Fine. Now, after going inside the second one, this is the second one. The second div tag has got three division tags. Right. I want to go inside the first one. So, I can write slash div. By default, it means 1. If I write 1, or if I don't write, it doesn't really matter. Right? I'll just write div1. That means go inside the first division, which is this one. Right? Inside this division, again, there is a single division under which the tag will be present. So this is the single division. So div and after that, this is the form tag. Fine. Inside this form tag, you have the division called email division under which your input field is present. Okay. So you have a division under it. Sorry. You have a form tag under it, then a division under the form tag and under that division you have the input field right so you write over here input okay so you this is this will be your absolute x path and using this you can identify the object but this is a very dicey way to identify the object why Suppose if tomorrow something changes in the page, a new division is introduced in between, then not even the username xpath, all the xpaths will change. Suppose developer introduces one more division out here, then your code is gone for a toss. I can use this xpath, I can write over here, I can go to my code, I can write web element username equals to driver dot find element by the xpath give this full xpath expression find it and then type username dot send keys hello right let's run it on firefox and if you run this See that it works. But, but tomorrow if something, a new division is added, right, all my x paths will go for a toss. 
I'll have to change. I will have to change everything in my application. So we don't prefer using these absolute experts until or unless it's quite necessary. Fine. Sometimes what happens is Selenium is not identifying the element. It's not able to deal with it. But when you give the absolute expert, which is the short, short location of that element, Selenium works properly. Until or unless you don't get a scenario like that, don't use it. What we use in terms of experts, we use partial experts. Right. Now before I move over to partial expert, how do how do I get the expats in my browser? You can get it. It's quite simple. You go to Google and type download Firefox. Open in Firefox and download uh, Firepath. Okay. Firepath is a plugin inside Firefox browser. Download it and you can go to this site, you'll see this green button over here, you can add it to Firefox. In the end, your Firefox will restart and you will have this fire path added inside Firefox. Okay. Now, this fire path will give you the X paths of the element. Inside it, if you check generate absolute X path option, fine, it will give you the complete X paths of any element over which you move your mouse. But absolute XPath we do not use. We use a partial XPath. If you go down and uncheck the absolute XPath option, you'll get the partial XPath. For example, if you let's talk about Gmail. This username field can have an XPath like this. It's an element with the ID email. Fine. Slash slash star with the ID email. Don't use, don't ignore this dot. Don't put it as a part of the XPath. I'll just copy this and paste it here. This is the partial XPath. Double slash means that it is partial, it is not starting from the base of the HTML document. Okay, star means kind of regular expression. It is any element on the page. <coughs> it's better to put the tag name here. You write over here, it's an input tag. And at the rate, the any optional or mandatory attribute like ID is an attribute equals to email. It's an input tag with ID email. The syntax has to be very carefully written. If you even miss a single quote over here, it will give you an error. Similarly, in Chrome as well, in case of Chrome, if I go to Gmail and I have to find the XPath of the username field, right? Then you right click on the username field, go to inspect element, fine, and it will highlight the element. Okay, you right click on the element and you will get the option copy XPath. It's there by default inside Chrome. Okay, you copy the XPath and you put the X path here. Okay. Slash slash star. Star means any element input tag. And in Chrome, you know, it gives double quotes. You should replace it with single quote. Right. There's a question being asked. Which I, but which identification to be used in general by ID select or partial. Look, it depends. It depends what you want to use. You want to use CSS selectors, you want to use XPaths, you want to use IDs. There is no hard and fast rule written. Okay. Look, I've been using Selenium since 2007. Right. And I prefer using XPaths because at that time people knew about CSS selectors, but very few people knew about CSS selectors. I never knew about CSS selectors that time. I knew about XPaths. So still I keep on using XPaths because I have a habit, right? But yes, sometimes if I'm stuck with XPaths, then I move over to CSS selector, right? 
it depends again it depends on what you want what your team wants what what's the requirement okay so there are more than one identification mechanisms it's not mandatory that this is bad or this is good or this is this is this, this is not good but yes i have seen that on internet explorer not in all the applications but in some applications css selector is quite fast as compared to xpaths fine and most of the enterprise applications and all websites and all they run on ie fine and people tend to use css selectors more okay now uh, fine so this this is what i was talking about xpath okay i can copy this partial xpath and i can replace this full xpath with the partial xpath and now also this will work if you run this right look i'm just taking a very simple example the username field of gmail okay example looks si simple but the main idea is the concept behind it fine the identification mechanisms now suppose if i want to run this on chrome driver i replace this i have to modify my code remember my wordings i have to modify my code i have to command this then i have to enable chrome driver and then i have to run now what if i don't want to do like this i don't want to want to modify the code every time i want that the browser should be opened dynamically suppose there is a string over here string called browser name is mozilla right now i am hard coding the value of this string but generally we can read the value of this string from an excel file or an or some external source xml file or a properties file or a text file suppose there's a text file in my c drive in that text file i write mozilla and the code reads that file the browser should op which should be open should be mozilla and it opens mozilla so how do i do like that how do i make this code dynamic enough that i don't want i don't open up i don't comment the code and uncomment it to open a different browser to understand that concept again i will come back to the concept of interface fine we know that right now we know according to the architecture of web driver web driver is an interface and the two drivers which we have studied firefox driver and chrome driver as well as i driver all the drivers rather i driver and firefox driver are the classes implementing the web driver interface fine these two classes they implement the interface right now similarly on the same lines laptop was an interface and ibm laptop and hp laptop were the classes implementing the interface okay right now suppose hp laptop tells me i have an additional feature which never comes from the laptop interface a feature like public void fingerprint recognition so this is the feature which is a security feature of hp laptop fine this is a function which is only present in hp laptop but it is not coming from the laptop interface if i go to test laptop.java when i create the hp laptop object i write over here hp.start then hp. Uh, fingerprint recognition i can call that but this function will not be a part of ibm right now how does this affect us it affects us in the way that there is a unique way to create objects that is you write like this listen to this carefully you write laptop l equals to new 
HP laptop. When I write like this, what am I doing basically? I am writing the name of interface i equals to new class which is implementing the interface. Out here I was writing the name of the class which is implementing the interface equals to new class which is implementing the interface. Out here I am writing the name of the interface equals to new. Now how this is different from this? With this you can call all the functions which are there in lap, HP laptop. You can write L dot start, L dot recharge. Start and recharge are the functions which are there in the laptop interface. Right? And when you write like this, hold on. When you write like this, I can call both the, these functions and the functions which the, the functions which will be called will be the functions inside the HP laptop interface. If you run this, the last two lines if you see it will print starting HP laptop and recharging HP laptop. Right? So this way you can call the functions in a class which are coming from the interface. But I cannot write this. You cannot call the functions which are local to that class. I cannot write call the fingerprint recognition over here. I can call it only when I am creating the concrete object of that class. But if I am writing the interface name equals to new class which is implementing the interface, I cannot call the function which is not the part of the interface. Only those functions which can be called the only those functions can be called which are the part of the interface. Fine. So, how is this helpful? How is this helpful? If I write, I'll just comment this. I'll just create a new class called dynamic browser opening fine and in this class I write web driver driver equals to new Firefox driver how is this different than writing Firefox driver equals to new Firefox driver? In with this I can call the functions of Firefox driver which are coming from the web driver interface. Okay? Right? Now some people say fine this is an advantage because I am not able to access all the features of Firefox driver. The thing is 99% of the features in the drivers they are coming from the interface. You don't really have to worry. And this thing can help you to initialize the browsers on the fly. That is, you write over here string browser equals to say Mozilla. Fine. And initially, you can init not initialize your driver. You keep the driver object as null. Fine. After that you put an if statement that if the browser is equal to Mozilla then driver equals to new Firefox driver. Else if the browser is equal to Chrome, then you just set the system property first and then initialize the driver. 
the same driver which references the web driver interface to new chrome driver right and similar case for i that is if the browser is equal to i then system dot set property web driver dot i dot driver and give the path and initialize driver equals to new internet explorer driver fine after that the functions are same in all the drivers right because all the drivers they implement the web driver interface if I write driver dot get http gmail dot com no matter whether Firefox is opening or Chrome is opening or I is opening fine gmail dot com will open for sure on whether whichever browser is opening and always remember some people think that fine uh, if I am writing like this driver dot hold on I'll tell you driver dot find element by the X path the X path you write like this there is an input field whose ID is email fine this is the username Right. Now I will not write web element username and all like this. This is a web element right. On the fly you initialize it. You just write dot send keys. Hello. When execution starts, execution will start from the left side. First the element would be found and then it will be typed in. Okay. So I am not writing two different lines in one line. I find the element in the second line. I use it. Okay. I just wrote in one line. Now does this the question being asked once was that if there is an XPath in Firefox, will that XPath be valid in Chrome and I? Yes, that will be valid because the page source remains the same, right? In all the browsers, the page source remains the same and Selenium works on the source of the page. This XPath is based on the page source. Okay, so if you run this code, now I am selecting Mozilla, so Mozilla will open. Hold on, I think there is some error coming up. Invalid selector exception. Look, when does this exception comes up. This exception comes up when you have a mistake in your XPath. Look, I have made a mistake in the XPath. I have opened up this single code but I did not close it. So in always remember invalid selector exception comes up when there is a mistake in your XPath. It is not that the element is not found but you have given an XPath which has got a syntax error. Okay. Now if you run this You will see Gmail opening and again it works. Even if I change the browser, now if I change the browser to Chrome, this will work on Chrome as well. Just a minute. Right. So now if I work in Chrome, You see that? It works. I did not change anything in the code. I just changed the browser name. So with the help of interfaces, with the proper knowledge of interfaces, you can work quite dynamically. right? And this is what the architecture of Selenium is. Everybody asks in the interviews, if you get an answer, what is the architecture of Selenium? It's very simple. There is everything starts from the web driver interface, which is the basis of all the drivers all the drivers they implement the web driver interface fine then there is a web element interface which 
holds various types of elements which are there in the page okay in the web driver interface you have a function known as find element this function is implemented by all the drivers and this returns you the reference of web element interface okay so what is the question no Marzad you cannot do that browser type is in, browser type should be like Mozilla Chrome I any existing browser fine so right now coming back to selenium again if I'm writing Mozilla here now if you look at this thing carefully if I run the code you will see Mozilla which is opened by the code is very different than Mozilla which is on your regular PC. Mozilla which is in your regular PC has some bookmarks, has Firebug installed in it, okay? Maybe it has some custom add-ons which you have installed. But Mozilla which is opened by Selenium is not having Firebug. The bookmarks are empty, fine. It is as if it's a fresh Mozilla which is installed on your system. Okay, to understand the fact why this is happening, you need to understand the concept of Firefox profiling. This is a new topic which I am starting right now. Okay, then I will come back to identification of objects because many times when you are executing the script, okay, you are executing the script, you are on this page, from this page you go to the second page, from second page you go to the third page and some error happens and script fails. Now you want to investigate the elements on the third page which are there and the problem which you face is that there is no firebug. So the browser in which the script is executing, you want to investigate that particular browser but the problem is firebug is not the part of that browser. Okay. Moreover, if you have to do the testing of HTTPS websites, which are secure websites, you get security errors and all again. To overcome that, you need the concept of Firefox profiling. Now, this is only there in Firefox. The concept which I'm going to explain you is only there in Firefox. Right? To understand the concept of Firefox profiling, a very generic example which I give every time is, suppose you are using your machine, your laptop, your desktop with a friend of yours. You want that when you open Firefox, you should see your own instance of Firefox. That means a Firefox having your own set of bookmarks, a Firefox having your own set of settings, fine. And your friend wants that when he looks at Firefox, he should be having his own set of settings, own set of bookmarks, own set of add-ons and all everything. So this can be achieved with profiling concept of Firefox. To achieve this, make sure that first of all, you close Firefox from file exit menu. Do not close Firefox from this cross. Okay, always close it from file exit. And after that, go to run, Windows run and type firefox.exe hyphen p profile manager. Okay and click on OK. So you will get a window like this. In your machine you will only have default over here. Default is the default profile which is there in your machine. I will create a new profile called as Feb Weekend. Okay. I will create a profile called Feb Weekend and click on finish. So this profile would be created. Okay. And when you start the Firefox, a new instance of Firefox will start on your machine. And you will see it's not got Firebug, it's not got any settings and all anything. This same thing happens when you start Firefox with 
web driver web driver creates its own internal profile which gets destroyed when the program ends okay now you can ask web driver to not create its own particular profile but to open up a profile which is created by you on your machine suppose in this profile you have done some proxy settings right to test a website you need to have proxy settings or for example i go to google in this particular profile and i bookmark google page along with that i type here download firebug and i keep firebug downloaded on my machine i add firebug in this particular profile right and i want to open up this particular profile with selenium right this profile has got firebug in it this profile has got google as a bookmark okay to understand that you need to create the object of a class known as profiles i9 okay you write this is an internal class in web driver okay you write over here profiles i9 p equals to new profiles i9 practically this class it represents all the firefox profiles which are present on your machine the concept of firefox profile is only there in mozilla it's not there in ie or chrome okay so this class represents all the firefox profiles which are present on your machine and you write on the next line p dot get the profile fine get the profile which profile the profile which you just created hold on i'll just get the name again feb underscore weekend capital f capital w okay feb weekend this is the profile which i just created and take it in the class object <coughs> hold on write it like this there is a class known as firefox profile get profile will give you the profile corresponding to feb weekend it will return you the object of firefox profile class okay and when you initialize your firefox driver you write the profile here in the constructor so now if you run this you will see this is the browser which is open but this browser has got firefox so the browser on which the testing will happen you can investigate that browser moreover it's also got the google bookmark and all everything so that means now selenium is opening feb weekend profile and it is launching that okay now um fine guys actually um uh, right so anybody yeah um i use firefox uh, firefox to get the export partial export and uh, google for google you say the inspect elements i'm sorry for chrome so what is the i where can you get the i you have to calculate it? manually okay as we proceed with the course i'll also take up the manual calculations of xpath which is very important there are ways in i to find it out but you know in the end what happens in in the in the real practical industry in the real practical world i never use firebug or firepart to get the xpath i you i get it practically out of the application fine so as we proceed i'll tell you okay and moreover guys those of you who already got registered fine they were asking me what all should we study before the next class well before the next class i would recommend people hold on sai was asking me this question go through module 4 right 
go to module 5 4 and 5 of java language okay and 12 13 12 and 13 in case of web driver okay 4 5 12 13 please watch these videos fine Uh, I need to get the today's audio and yesterday's audio. Yeah, I will give you, I will mail you, mail you the complete today's and yesterday's session. Today morning I have to go out somewhere. So I have converted them. Only thing is uploading them on YouTube is left. Okay. Right. Any other questions? Any questions from anybody regarding the course, regarding Selenium as a tool? Anything? Hi, Ashish, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, web element is an interface, right? Web element? Yeah, it is an interface. Yeah, web element is an interface. So, uh, is it deriving from web Java to web Java interface? No, it is a separate interface. Web element is a separate interface and web driver is a separate interface. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anything else from anybody? Anything else regarding course? Regarding any questions? Because this is the first batch in which I am getting so less questions. Otherwise, I used to end up the training at 10.30 and people used to ask me questions till 11.30. Yeah, Peggy, the next class will be on Saturday and Sunday, yes. Next Saturday and next Sunday, same time, the next class will be there. Yes, you can handle dynamic. For example, the question being asked is, can we handle dynamic objects? A very certain example in front of you is this number. This number is changing every time. Yeah, question is can we change the dynamic, can we detect dynamic objects? So this number is a dynamic object. It is changing every second. But yes, but if you look at the X path of this element, hold on, I will just open the original profile. And if you look at this particular element, then X path would remain same. An element with the ID quota. X path is like an address of the element. There's a house. There's an address to that house. But anybody can stay in that house. It's just like that. Okay, you can handle. Right. How do we register for the next class? Well, it's quite simple. Go to my site qtpselenium.com. You can add me on Skype and be online after the class and tell me that you want to join the next class. I'll give you a username and password for the web, for your logins into the website. I think yesterday, people who registered yesterday, I have created their logins, right? And you can reach me through contact trainer section on the website. Okay, click on that and just send me a message. Contact trainer that you want to enroll and I will get back to you. Right? Send me your correct user login ID, sorry, email ID and phone number. Right. Any other question? Why did I add Java doc in Eclipse? This is because so that I don't have to go again and again into the documentation and open seleniumsq.org. So that's why for small things I can refer the Java docs inside my doc, inside my Eclipse itself to save my time, right? Anybody else? Right. Okay. I think. How to find hidden element? You know what, if there's an element on the page which is hidden and if I write over here driver.find element by the xpath 
this will find the element and if you fire the function is displayed this function will tell you whether the element is visible on the page or not it prints true if it is visible false if it is hidden right sometimes you have got hidden components on the page right Marzad, okay fine Marzad you will get the username password after the class right away I will send it to class. Yeah I know that you paid today. <laughs>